Hi, welcome to this latest episode of Lightboard Lessons. And today, we're gonna extend our discussion on Kerberos. And in the first video, we talked about basic uh, protocol uh, authentication. So today, we're gonna transition into some more advanced concepts. So, you know, if every client could talk to every service, the basic authentication that we shared in the first video would suffice. But that's just not the case in the real world. So there's two Kerberos extensions that can help with that. The first is delegation. Sometimes a client can talk directly to a service, but then that service calls another service that the client can't reach directly. Think about like a web server in your database, right? You have a client that will reach a web server, and that client, when it gets a request, is not then going to uh, circumvent a path to the database. Now, we're going to not allow that. The web server is actually going to make that call to the database, right? And so um, if that database in, in the Kerberos world requires that this client is uh, going to authenticate here, so I'm going to need authentication for this request, but then to the database, I also need that auth on the database. That's where delegation uh, would come to play by the client passing its if you recall, this ticket, granting ticket, it could pass it to this service and then delegate it, in other words, and then that can use the, uh, the ticket in order to reach out to the database. Um, so that's one of the extensions. The other extension is in the case to where, in this scenario, this client is, um, uh, let's say that client is a domain member. And so it can request um, for, it can authenticate itself to uh, your uh, key services and, and get a ticket granting ticket. But what if that client isn't a domain member? That's where protocol transition comes into play. And that um, in, conjun in conjunction with uh, delegation is a mechanism that allows a service to uh, vet the client um, and then turn that um, that request into a Kerberos request and then delegate appropriately to that service and so we'll get into some of the nitty-gritty details here but these extensions let me write them down is first delegation and then the other one is protocol transition all right, so the way this works is if you, we draw up our original drawing where we have our client, we have our uh, key distribution center, and that's where our authentication services and our um, ticket granting services live. Put that there. And then we have our service. And then let's say we have our, our third level service here. And we'll just assume like this is um, a, uh, let's say that this service is host service dot my domain dot com. And then this service over here is http www.myservice.com. Okay, so the way it would normally work with just this scenario in our basic auth is we would, we would uh, make our authentication request, then we would get our ticket uh, granting uh, request, we'd get our ticket, we would submit the ticket over to the service, and we would be, um, uh, we get our service um, ticket, we'd be able to reach our service and, and all, is, all is good. Um, in this case, we have a ticket granting ticket and we pass that over uh, to the service and then the service can reach out to the KDC uh, where it's using that ticket granting ticket to get a service ticket to then come over here. So in unconstrained delegation, there is obviously 
no constraint on how that delegation works. Obviously, there are security implications to that, and that would be bad. And so what uh, came after the original unconstrained delegation is constrained delegation, and that would, um, in your delegation, you say, my allowed service is dub, 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 uh, my service uh, dot com, and that's for the HTTP. So I didn't write, uh, I didn't write that correctly, but assume this is here with my slash HTTP www.myservice.com. Okay, so as that delegation occurs, this would be allowed, but if I had another service out here, um, where let's say it was HTTP www.1, then if I make a request there, but I don't have an allowance uh, for that delegation, then that would not be allowed. And so that is um, basically how, how delegation works. And so, uh, and, and constrained delegation is a requirement for protocol transition that we'll call, uh, or that we'll talk about here in a minute. But constrained delegation, another common name for that. And so we'll say constrained. And another name for that is service for user to proxy. And the, the shortcut you'll see places is uh, S for U to proxy. And okay, so that's delegation. Then we come over to protocol transition. All right, and I'll draw this up and then we'll talk about it. But basically what happens here is we have another client. Who is not part of this domain. And so this client comes over to this service here. And whether it's, you know, PKI uh, with a user um, or user pass. Incidentally, um, that, that there's no requirement for the uh, service here to, to validate that. Obviously, that would be poor security and you should. Um, and so this client in a good deployment would be, would be vetted and validated uh, by this service. And then in the service, at this point, you have your AS request from our basic auth, your AS request. And then once that is there, then you have your uh, ticket granting service request. And assuming all of those are healthy, then you have actually have your um, application uh, service request back to your, your actual service. And uh, we still have the allowed for this service for say it's both of these clients and and that's how protocol transition works. So the outside knows nothing about Kerberos, but the inside uh, knows everything it needs to know about Kerberos to, to deal with that. And so the three things that protocol transition has to handle, um, it, it's, uh, let's see, so let's do one. It's gotta vet the user. As I said, there's no uh, real requirement on how that's done, uh, but, but that's the first step. The second is you have to um, uh, create a Kerberos ticket request on the user's behalf. So um, ticket request on user's behalf. So in basic, like we talked about, you know, the, he's running all of the uh, Kerberos services, but in the case where a client is not a Kerberos aware, um, you have to do that on the user's behalf, all right? And then, um, so what, what this process is called is uh, we had the uh, uh, service uh, proxy. This one is the service for user to self. And so this is service for user to self, okay? 
And, and in essence, the delegation service authenticates itself to the domain to get the ticket granting ticket. Then it performs a TGS request to get a ticket for the user. Then it does another TGS request using this new user ticket to get a ticket for the actual service. And it does that as the user, okay? Now third, the delegation service must perform the constrained delegation, okay? Constrained delegation. That comes back to what we already talked about. Okay. So, let me build this out real quick. Okay. So, if we, if we want to look at that uh, in, in the four steps. We have the, and this is from the, the perspective of the service that's doing the protocol transi transition, right? You have your first request, which is the service account AS request. Okay. Okay. And that's the initial AS request from the delegation service. That's step one. And of course, it'll get a response with the uh, ticket granting ticket, okay? That'll come back. All right, number two, we have a TGS request for an S4U ticket for the user. All right, so that's a service for user proxy ticket request. Okay. All right, and that's from the service account, again, on behalf of the user. So that will come back with a ticket. All right, and then we have the service request um, or service ticket request using an S4U ticket. So this is another um, a TGS request. So this is the first one, uh, number one. And then this one is number two. All right, and then so, uh, and then you'll get a, a TGS response with the ticket for the service, okay? So this is your ticket granting ticket, this is your actual service ticket, okay? And then finally, you have your AP request. And so the regular AP request to the requested service itself is usually buried in the services, um, in the services protocol. So uh, a lot of detail here. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, drop a comment in the video. Uh, thanks for joining. If you enjoyed this video, uh, click subscribe and we'll see you out there in the community.